Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel, where I'm always breaking down the hot sports topics of the day. My name is Mike. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to get all of my latest sports talk videos. John Idzik has been named the next general manager of the New York Jets. Uh, he comes from Seattle, where he was the vice president of football administration with the Seahawks. First, a little bit about the Jets search. I actually like that the Jets went out, took their time, interviewed a lot of candidates, and really evaluated each one and sort of did things logically in this search. I think that's a good sign. For Jet fans that are wondering why it took so long, you know, I kind of take the opposite approach. I take the approach that they, they went, they did their due diligence, they got a guy they thought fit well in the organization, they took their time doing it. Uh, when you have your head coach in place already, I don't think there's any real rush to get the GM in place. Just pick the right one who you think can come in and work with Rex Ryan uh, from day one and hit the ground running. Uh, I The more I read about Idzik, the more I read about his past accomplishments, I think he's that guy. There's going to be a tendency for Jeff fans to look at his title that he had in Seattle and say, well, this is just a salary cap guy. How is he different than Tannenbaum? That's a reaction you're going to get from a lot of Jeff fans. But when you look deeper into Idzik's background, I truly believe he's a football guy with a business background. Okay, Idzik's a guy who played college football. He was an assistant in the old European Football League. And also in college, his experience, okay, in the NFL, he was a, a part of the pro personnel department for Tampa Bay and then moved into the administration part, all right? He has experience in the personnel side, even with Seattle. They sent him out on what I read was quote-unquote scouting missions for the last couple drafts to prepare him for life as a GM. And if I get a guy who was heavily involved in the scouting of this year's draft for Seattle, okay, First round pick, Bruce Irvin, a guy that everyone blasted, ended up with eight and a half sacks. Second round pick, Bobby Wagner. I think that Bobby Wagner, the linebacker, I think that pick ended up good. I don't think I even need to explain. Third round, Russell Wilson. Not bad, right? Seattle has a franchise quarterback that they're paying third round money right now. So do I want a guy that was involved in, in drafting him and the other two guys heading my organization? I think that's a good place to start. Um, again, it's important to me that he has the pro personnel background and most importantly, the situation the Jets are in now where they're over the salary cap, they need a guy who has some familiarity with the salary cap and Idzik has plenty of it. So again, a business guy, a football guy with a business background. So that's why I think Idzik is a good hire here. Um, again, Jeff Inns, don't jump to the conclusion that he's sort of a uh, different version of Tannenbaum. Uh, he was part of the front office that built the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was with the Buccaneers. That was his longest stint. He started in the pros with the Buccaneers. Then after the success the Buccaneers had, he moved on to Arizona. And again, eventually, him along with the other guys in the front office built that team up to where they were NFC champions. And then, of course, most recently, working with Snyder out there in Seattle, you know, they built a team that was right on the cusp of making the NFC Championship game, a team that's stocked with a lot of young players that aren't making serious, big-time money. So I think that's a guy you need coming in here. The Jets are over the salary cap. They have questions to answer a quarterback. And most importantly, the problem with the Jets, and if you're a Jet fan, you know this, is their overall depth. They just don't have a lot of good players. And that's the main, I think, the Sanchez contract and the overall lack of depth and quality players on the roster is what eventually did Tannenbaum in. And we'll see how this unfolds here. Obviously, Rex's relationship with Idzik will be um, pretty pretty unique and, and interesting to follow. It seems up to this point, Rex has had all final say on personnel moves, and mainly because I think he, could, he sold to Tannenbaum, look, I have experience with this stuff. Let me kind of roll with this guy or this guy or that guy. Well, I don't think Rex is going to have carte blanche anymore. You got a guy in Idzik who has a 20-year background in the league. You get a guy who has a personnel experience, certainly more cap negotiating experience, but has football experience, has a little bit of a pro personnel background. Okay, Now I think, to be honest, no offense to Tannenbaum, I think his opinion based on his experience, will hold more weight with Rex and Woody. You have to remember, the pressure is on Rex to win this year. All right, If there's a lame duck in this situation, it has to be Rex. I know Woody loves him, 
and uh, Woody gushes about him still. But Rex is on the hot seat this year, okay, not Izzik. So I think that gives Izzik an upper hand if the, you know, as far as trying to rebuild this organization. I mean, he's walking into a situation that is a tough one. I like the fact that he has the guts to come into this situation and think he can fix it. If you look at the other three places he was, Tampa, Arizona, Seattle, definitely situations that were not ideal when him and his executive team got there. Okay, and they got those teams to the point um, that I detailed before. So I know a lot of Jets fans are going to overreact and think he's a Tannenbaum clone and that Rex is going to have full run over everything. Uh, I happen to not agree with that. I think Idzik's opinion will carry weight. I just hope he can replenish this roster with more quality players. I think that's job number one. Obviously, trimming that salary cap down however they can is job number two. Okay, and addressing the Sanchez situation. One thing you're going to hear grumbled about a lot is Schneider, the Seattle general manager, has already said he'd be open to trading Matt Flynn since Idzik was a part of the team that brought him to Seattle. There's going to be natural rumors that, hey, is Matt Flynn now a fit in New York because Idzik is coming over? You know, I don't know that. Okay, and I think until Idzik sits down with, with, with Rex and whoever the new offensive coordinator will be, until they sit down and discuss things, uh, I think those rumors are a little bit premature. Uh, it'd be interesting to see who he likes as the uh, offensive coordinator uh, when all is said and done. Uh, who's making that decision with the offensive coordinator? I would assume it'd be a combination of Idzik and Rex Ryan. Uh, we'll see how that unfolds. But again, I'm on board with the hire of Idzik. This could turn out to uh, really blow up in my face here based on the recent history of the Jets. But I don't think they would hire someone unless he was strong-willed and had the football experience that Idzik has. And they needed a guy with cap background to get them out of the cap mess they're in. I fully believe in that. Um, it was a cap guy who got them into this mess. We get a combination of a cap guy and a football guy to get us out. That, that's what I have to believe as a Jeff fan going forward here. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the Idzik hire. Uh do you, are you on board with it? Are you against it? Do you think now Rex is going to run rampant with power throughout this organization? Or do you think Idzik would be able to put the reins on him? Uh, let me know what you think in the YouTube comments. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at SNewsAnalysis. And again, guys, if you subscribe to my page, you get all of my videos uh, delivered directly to you. Thanks, guys, for listening, and have a good day.